Hello and good evening, this is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israeli Defense Minister Moshe Yalon calls on the international community to impose new sanctions against the Islamic Republic of Iran amid testing of ballistic missiles. Russian President Vladimir Putin instructs his armed forces to start pulling out of Syria over a period of five months, concluding Moscow's military operations in the war-torn country. Defense Minister Moshe Yalon called on the international community to impose new sanctions against the Islamic Republic of Iran after Israel's arch enemy conducted a ballistic missile testing, which the Iran Revolutionary Guard emphasized was aimed at deterring the Jewish state. Israel's top defense official also said Iran was advancing in other activities that breach international law, including the delivery of weapons to terror organizations in the chaotic region, among others. There are at least three reasons today to sanction the Iranian regime. One is the proliferation of arms and terror. We have other evidence that they deliver weapons to terror organizations in the region, to Hezbollah, which is here, now even in, in the Arab League, uh, a terror organization, deliver money, delivering weapons, advanced weapons, and so forth, delivering weapons to the Houthis in Yemen, via Oman today, hard evidence on a daily basis. It's a violation of UN Security Council resolution. Terror infrastructure in the last year, two cells has been, terror cells have been exposed in Europe and even in other countries. So it's one reason to sanction this regime. The second is the missile, the ballistic missile test. Very provocative, believing that they are not going to be harmed because we shouldn't be the party spoilers of the deal. The third uh, uh, reason is human rights issues. This regime succeeded in strengthening the gripping government. And yes, we, we hear that uh, most of the Iranians are not happy with this regime, but they succeeded to strengthen the grip in governing in the last uh, uh, 30 years or so, going back to the revolution of 1979, hanging dissidents in the marketplaces today. Oppression, suppression. The ballistic testing, which the Iranian Revolutionary Guard spray painted, quote, to wipe Israel off the map on the missile, was widely condemned by the international community. The United States and France, two of the six members that signed on the nuclear accord with the Islamic Republic, said they would seek a Security Council response to the Iranian violations as evidence confirmed that the tests have indeed involved nuclear-capable ballistic missiles, which is a clear breach of a resolution implemented back in July. These were designed to be capable of delivering nuclear weapons. This merits a Council response. Uh, the Council needs to take its responsibility, and I'm, Russia seems to be lawyering its way to look for reasons not to act, rather than stepping up and being prepared to shoulder our collective responsibility. We will continue to push in the Security Council in the 2231 format, bring forward the technical uh, information that Iran itself has made public, showing that the technology they used is inherently capable of delivering nuclear weapons, and thus inherently defying Resolution 2231. So we're not going to give up at the Security Council, no matter, uh, how, no matter the quibbling that we heard today about, about this and that. Um, and we also can consider, of course, our own appropriate national response. Russia, which has Security Council veto power, said that Iran should not face new UN Security Council sanctions over its recent ballistic missile tests because they do not violate any UN resolutions, according to Moscow. Meanwhile, during his remarks at the Wilson Center in Washington, D.C., the Israeli top defense official, Defense Minister Moshe Yalon, said Jerusalem has evidence that Russian weapons are being used by internationally recognized terror organizations in the Middle East, 
including the Lebanese Hezbollah and the Palestinian Hamas. We are not happy from the fact that uh, Russian made weaponry systems are delivered to our hostile enemies like Hezbollah, Hamas. The problem is that uh, these uh, weaponry systems are procured by Syria or Iran and then delivered to this kind of end users. Of course, when it happens, we provide our evidence. Now to Moscow, where Russian President Vladimir Putin announced he has instructed his armed forces to start pulling out of Syria over a period of five months, concluding a military operation that bolstered his ally, President Bashar Assad's ability to withstand and repel rebel gains. Поэтому приказываю министру обороны с завтрашнего дня начать вывод основной части нашего нашей воинской группировки из Сирийской Арабской Республики. The move was announced as talks to find grounds for a political process between the warring sides in Syria resumed in Geneva. President Putin to that end ordered an intensification of Russia's diplomatic efforts to achieve a peace deal to end the five-year civil war which has killed more than half a million people and displaced millions, causing the worst refugee crisis since World War II. In response to the Russian announcement, Syrian Western-backed opposition said they perceived it as a positive move, but stressed that the nature of the pullout should be evaluated and Moscow's actions on the ground will be closely monitored. Now to another matter, the Arab League labeled Shiite Muslim Hezbollah as a terrorist organization. Hezbollah now has a decision, a decision from the Majlis Al-Jama'a that is related to the Hezbollah Al-Arhabi. These are the two parts that I have said to you today. يتضمن وفي إجماع على هذا القرار على هذا القرار مع تحفظ ل لبنان والعراق والجزائر والجزائر من الجزائر والجزائر على بعض الأشياء ملاحظة ملاحظة من الجزائر فلذلك إلى الآن صدر من وزارة الداخلية والآن صدر من وزراء الخارجية. The declaration came hours after the Saudi Arabian delegation stormed out of the meeting following a speech by Iraqi Foreign Minister Ibrahim El Jafari, in which he defended Al Hasht El Shaabi, an Iraqi state sponsored umbrella organization sponsored of some 40 militias, primarily Shiite Muslims, that combat the Islamic State and is perceived by the Saudi Kingdom as a terror organization considering its Iranian backing. Tensions between Sunni and Shiite Muslim powers have been on the rise as sectarian wars rage in Syria, Yemen and Iraq and the Arab League has become a forum for predominantly Sunni countries led by Saudi Arabia to air grievances with regional Shiite power Iran. Thank you for watching us. We pray for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. Jonathan Hassan of Erev Tov and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time. In order to donate to TV7 Israel News, please follow these simple steps. 
first press the donate logo located at the bottom left side of TV7 Israel News Facebook page or on the donate tab at the head of the page. Then insert the amount you'd like to donate and fill in your credit card information. Just like this. And press review donation and continue. After reviewing your donation details, please press donate to finalize your donation. That's it. Your donation is now complete and an email with your donation details has been sent to your email address. You can also print your donation receipt by pressing the link here. Thank you for supporting TV7 Israel News.